yes, here we are all together again. It's a Sunday. It's a fun day. It's time to improve your English. Live from Much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon. This is Live English. Yes, here we go again. I don't know about you, but I really can't keep up with just how fast everything is moving at the moment. Time, politics, the world, humanity, everything seems to be changing on a daily basis. What do you think? Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? Are you happy? I really hope so. So here we are. We are approaching the middle of December. We are coming towards the end of 2018. 2019 is waiting around the corner. And I think we will all have to get used to saying 2019. And this always happens to me whenever the new year starts. I always find myself saying or writing down the wrong year. I always write the previous year down. So I'm just getting used to saying 2019 because 2019 is on its way and it it looks as if it's going to be a very, very busy year and also there will be a lot of changes taking place here on YouTube. There will be some new features added on YouTube. So this is nothing to do with me. These are the changes that are taking place on YouTube itself. Also, there is a new law which may or may not come into force next year. Article 13. Have you heard about it? And this is a new law that will apply here in Europe. And this will concern any material that is uploaded onto the internet. And that includes YouTube. And apparently what this is, is it is a tightening. They are going to tighten the rules concerning copyright and apparently it is going to affect everyone not just some people but everyone so if you put something on the internet if you upload something it will affect you especially if you live in Europe talking of which on Tuesday Tuesday coming this Tuesday we will find out whether or not the government here in the UK is going to approve Brexit. So it's decision time on Tuesday. There is a proposal. There is a plan uh, of t how we are going to leave the European Union. And that is, of course, the United Kingdom. We are talking Brexit. <sighs> what a mess. What a complete chaotic mess that has been. I don't know if you've been following it in the news, but here in the UK, it is one of the, the most widely spoken about and talked about subjects in the whole country, I can tell you now. So that is happening on Tuesday, the day after tomorrow. We will find out whether Brexit will be going ahead or will there be even more delays. Find out <laughs> in a couple of days time. Of course, we are here to share our love of English. I hope you are feeling super duper today. I have had some lovely email messages. I had a lovely one asking, Mr Duncan, please 
would it be possible for you to do a daily live stream so perhaps you could come onto the internet and talk to us every day now I think that's a good idea so there is a big plus side to that and that is the fact that I could come on every day I could talk to you every day but the thing is and this is a very big problem not only would I get the viewers that is of course a big consideration I have to think about these things so if I do a live stream every day would you watch it so that's one thing to consider also and I think this is going back to what I said a few moments ago YouTube is not not very stable at the moment they are making lots of changes lots of things are taking place some of the changes are good and some of them are not so good and some of them will affect me next year not in a good way either so in a negative way so there are lots of changes taking place in 2019 most of them will be very negative ones and this is something that I am going to have to face during the next 12 months unfortunately so I would love to do a daily live stream the only problem is YouTube doesn't like live streaming unless of course you are playing computer games so if you are going on with your live stream and you are playing computer games YouTube loves you they like you a lot however if you are going on to YouTube teaching English or doing something educational YouTube <coughs> doesn't like it they give it a very big thumbs down so they are not fans of people who do anything other than live streaming with games so we are talking people that play con computer games like Fortnite oh look at that did you hear that I just said something that's very trendy and current with teenagers do I play computer games no I don't I don't play computer games I used to play them years ago but I, I don't play them anymore so maybe that's one of the reasons why YouTube doesn't like my live streams but we will see what happens so it looks as if 2019 is going to be a very interesting year for various reasons okay let's have a look outside the window it is a nice day here not too bad it's quite warm but we have had a lot of rain and also it's been very windy we have had some huge gales blowing around the house and it's been very windy here I was a little worried that my Christmas lights would get blown down but they still appear to be up and they they look as if they they have braved the elements they have survived the windy weather would you like to have a look at my Christmas lights so there they are right now that is a live picture of my Christmas lights outside the house and you can see it is very cloudy it is starting to get dark already because now we are into midwinter and of course it gets very dark early here in the UK at this time of year so yes there are my Christmas lights outside the house and I'm very pleased to announce that they have survived all of the strong wind that we've had recently so I'm pretty pleased about that what about you are you putting any Christmas lights up on your house are you going to decorate the front of your house or maybe perhaps inside your house perhaps you will put a Christmas tree inside your house we have a very interesting theme today the theme is snow and do you know why I'm going to talk about snow today well there are several reasons <laughs> I think Mr Steve just walked into the camera then did you see that <laughs> there are many reasons why we are talking about snow today well first of all a year ago today 12 months ago we had some of the heaviest snow ever 
and there it is can you see it so that is one year ago today we had lots of snow and as you may have noticed just when I showed you the live view outside there is no snow so there it is you can see the view exactly one year ago today and you can see outside it is very very snowy but today there is no snow there is nothing around whatsoever but there it is last year look how deep the snow was last year it was incredible there was so much snow and another thing I did last year I I went outside to feed the birds because during the winter weather of course nature struggles quite a lot during the winter months so during the winter months I would go outside and I would feed the birds but you can see here in this video clip from last year the snow was very thick and it was everywhere and there I am in the garden you can see that I am struggling to walk through the snow and this is last year so you are looking at my garden 12 months ago and I am trying my best <laughs> to feed the birds as many regular viewers will know I love taking care of the animals especially the wild animals they need all of our help especially during the cold winter months so there you can see I am feeding the birds in the garden giving them some much needed food <laughs> and look how deep the snow is can you see so that was last year that was exactly one year ago today that is what my garden looked like and today what does the garden look like today well it doesn't look like that so this is what the garden looks like at the moment <laughs> very different to how it looked one year ago shall we have a look at the live chat because of course that is the reason why we are here today it is Sunday it's a fun day it's time to improve your English especially if you are interested in improving your listening skills this is a great place to be every Sunday don't forget you can catch me here and there underneath you can see the details live English every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time so there's no excuse for not knowing and of course if you wish to make a donation especially at this time of year because we are heading into a new year another 12 months of teaching English on YouTube and of course I have been doing this for over 12 years so another year is approaching and if you would like to make a donation through PayPal you are more than welcome to do so at that address there it is now going across your screen okay as promised we will have a look at the live chat let's see what is going on out there in the world on YouTube mm -mm -mm -mm. oh hello there lots of people <laughs> on the live chat let's go back to the beginning because the big question is who was first on the live chat <gasps> oh hello to Julia hello Julia guess what you are first on the live chat and that means you get an extra special round of applause Well done to you Julia and congratulations for being first on the live chat. Matrix is here also Martha in Poland. Olga hello Olga thank you very much for your video that you sent. I will be showing some videos later that I had sent during the week to my email address. Thank you very much for that. Also Jimmy Hero Family is here. Tomek is here Francisco 
Simona. Hello, Simona. Nice to see you. I, I haven't seen you for a long time. Simona, where have you been? What have you been doing? Belarusia is here. Of course, one of the moderators on today's live chat. Shirin, Tran, Connell and also Lilia. Hello, Lilia. Also, Lilia, we will be showing your special video later on so thank you very much for that I will be showing your videos today and most of them are in the snow and that's why I said today's theme is a snow theme <laughs> because many of the videos that have been sent to me have beautiful snow scenes Beatrice is here also Eric Rosa Louis. Hello, Louis. Sun Sun is here. Hello, Sun Sun. How are you? Welcome and nice to see you watching from Vietnam. Also, we have Burlop. Hello, Burlop. Also, Ute. Ute R. Hello to you. I haven't seen you for a long time either. Nice to see so many people today. Mark is here. And also Vadim, Vadim Pro, watching in Ukraine. Also Grace, Grace Chin. Hello to Grace, watching in Malaysia. And of course, as I mention every week, if I mention Malaysia, I always tell you that I have been to Malaysia many times in my life. Also, we have Lolly here. Oh, you are so cute in these pictures. Oh, which pictures do you mean? Do you mean the ones that appeared at the start of today's live stream? Yes, that is me and also Mr. Steve when we were very, very young. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, I can't stay here today. Oh, Pedro. Pedro can't stay here because my internet connection isn't working properly. I'm sorry to hear that, Pedro. Well, don't worry. You can always watch the live stream later, so don't worry too much about it. We will we will manage, I think, but I hope you will be able to join us next week. Olga. Yes, Olga, there are interesting subtitles which are shown as you speak them. Yes, there are subtitles that are available live if you are watching live, but there is a slight delay. And I have had a few complaints about the live stream having subtitles that are slightly delayed. But that's not my fault. That is because of YouTube and also because this is live. So because it's live, there will be a delay between me talking and the subtitles appearing. That's the reason why. But of course, there is good news because if you watch the live stream later, there are also subtitles on that and they are at the right time. So there is no delay. So if you watch the recording of this, you can have super duper subtitles. But if you watch this live, you will find that the subtitles are slightly delayed. So that's the reason why Pierre is here. Bonjour from Irene and Pierre, a big bonjour. To Irene and Pierre. Where are you watching at the moment? I think maybe you are in France. So correct me if I'm wrong. You are more than welcome to correct me. Sukat. Hello, Sukat. Nice to see you here as well. Rosa. Also, we have Sukat. Hello, Sukat. Also, Suku. Suku Gil. Hello to you as well. Wow, so many people today in the live chat. Thank you very much. Mirella is here. Also, Gosia. Analytic Brain. A big hello to you as well. Thank you for joining us again. And here we are in December. I don't know about you, but I think this year has gone by very quickly. What do you think? What has been your best moment of 2019? Or should I say 2018? You see, I'm saying it already. So what was your highlight of 2018? What was the best moment of the past 12 months? Did anything nice happen? 
Rosa is here it is a sunny day and 23 degrees that's not fair that's not fair I wish it was 23 degrees here sadly it isn't Galena is here Ernesto hello everybody I'm listening and walking in the countryside at the same time wishes from the south of Italy and have a nice Sunday with Mr Duncan thank you Ernesto that's very kind of you to say so thank you very much do you happen to know if there is any reason behind YouTube's bias Mr Duncan thank you Lilia well one of the reasons why YouTube doesn't like live streaming well two reasons one sometimes people can say and do things on the live stream that YouTube doesn't like or maybe the person will do a live stream and they will show copyrighted material maybe clips from a well-known movie or TV show and the other reason is YouTube is very interested in making lots and lots yes so that's the other reason why and that's the reason why gaming if you are a gamer if you play computer games and you stream your game live on YouTube you will get everything you need YouTube will bend over backwards for you however if you are a person teaching English like me and you are doing it live then YouTube really doesn't care I think that's the reason why so there are some big changes coming next year some some of them might affect me as well so it's going to be a very interesting new year that's all I can say French frog said last night it rained cats and dogs and the wind is blowing up a gale yes I bet it is it's quite windy here as well it's been very windy the last couple of days do you have any snow there in England no Lilia no Lilia no no snow I can't believe it so no Lilia at the moment there is no snow here in the UK although one year ago we had lots of snow everywhere it is very dark really yes it's starting to get dark here in the afternoon because the days are much shorter here in the UK during the winter yes I am releasing a Christmas tree I am putting up a Christmas tree and I will watch it oh thank you Kanish Kanish Sharma thank you very much for that isn't that lovely hello Mr Duncan the world is changing so fast due to the internet and people see other people live better than them and say me too I want it I want a beautiful car and I want that wonderful life too thank you Saturina for your comment there that's great yes I love reading your comments if you have a comment on anything maybe the weather or politics or even me <laughs> feel free to write something down and I will read it out in Vietnam the winter is coming and of course the weather is very cold Jamelia says have you lit the Christmas lights yet yes Jamelia the lights are on now I was going to do some filming of the Christmas lights outside but the weather has been so terrible over the past three days we've had some terrible storms and the wind has been awful so it's been very difficult to go outside although having said that can you believe it the weather today is quite good ah typical Tomek says <laughs> I don't know what that means you are such a sycophant to Lilia I don't know what that why why would you say that Tomek that's not very nice Lilia has sent a lovely video in would you like to see one of Lilia's videos well Lilia and also who else who else has sent a video in let's have a look we have had a video from Olga and also from Lilia and Catherine Fogs as well has sent a lovely vid uh, this is not a video this is actually a photograph 
So this is a photograph sent in by Catherine Fargs of the view from her house. And I must say that that is pretty nice. I like it. I love the view from your house, Catherine. That's pretty amazing. Shall we have a look at one of the videos? And then afterwards, Mr. Steve will be here with us, joining us live on the live chat. So let's have a look. First of all, this is a lovely clip from Lilia. And this week, Lilia went out into the snow to make a lovely message in the form of a video. Mr. Duncan. Hello there, Mr. Steve. Hello, folks from the live chat who might be watching this video right now. My name is Lilia. I'm 27 years old and I'm currently living in Kyiv, which is the capital of Ukraine. As you can see, we're having a proper winter around. We're having a very snowy one this year. And in this video, I really want to take you along with me on a little walk around my neighbourhood, the places where I really like to go and visit. And Oh, and by the way, I hope my mum doesn't watch this video because if she does, she would be very unhappy because I'm not wearing my hat today. So here is the first thing that I can see when I leave the house. I'm living in an old block of flats, which is sometimes referred to as a Hrushovka because it was built in the 60s by Soviet leader Nikita Hrushchev. Not literally him, but you get the idea. And here is a little park where I like to go to take my mind off things. Here is what it sounds like without the music. My husband, myself and our little cat are living in what I'd call a former industrial area of Kiev. There used to be quite a lot of plants and factories here, which no longer function. There is a very special factory not very far from our home. This is a factory where my grandfather and his team used to work on the first ever programmable calculator. If you have no idea what it is and how it works, don't worry, I don't know that either. The only thing I do know though, is that my grandfather's endeavours later grew into what we now know as a PC or a personal computer. So I'm very proud to walk here. It's not always that magical, to be fair. Snow often melts into brown slush. Everyone's shoes are caked in mud and it doesn't look that festive, if I'm honest. But I believe if your heart is warm and you keep celebrating secretly, no matter what, no weather can ruin the holiday spirit for you then. My mum, always told me that if you're in no mood to celebrate New Year or Christmas, you can always change it and get happier in a flash. Very often the festive mood is our choice. So let's go for it. Happy holidays, everyone. That is amazing. Thank you very much, Lilia, for your, your incredible video. Do, 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 do. It's a Sunday. It's a fun day. It's time to improve your English. It's live English every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. We have a snowy theme today. Now, can I just say it isn't snowing here in the UK? It's not snowing. We've had no snow whatsoever. But one year ago, Today, to this very day, we had snow. Oh, look, everyone. It's not a snowman. It's Mr. Steve. Here Hello. He... Yeah. <laughs> yes, one year ago, we were trapped in the house with a blizzard outside, yes. but not this year. In fact, it's quite warm outside today. I've been out there in the garden uh, doing a bit of tidying up, sweeping around, and it's actually... The wind's died down and it's quite warm, Lovely. which is unusual. That's good. I've pumped the tyres up on my car because I think they were a bit low, <laughs> so I shouldn't be aquaplaning anymore. <laughs> so St Steve won't be slipping and sliding. Well, for two reasons. One, he's, he's inflated his tyres. And two, we have no snow. But here it is last year. 
This is one year ago and this is what the garden looked like one year ago today, actually today. Blimey. So well, this, this, this is last year. Lily has got some of that in the Ukraine. Very good English. Uh, Lily has uh, got there. Very good. Very I, impressed. I must admit, my, my jaw dropped. Now, I, I, it take, as you know, Steve, it takes a lot to impress me. I'm not, I'm not a very easy person to impress if, if the truth were known. But I thought that was amazing. Your English is so clear. Uh, I'm so amazed gob by it. Gob smacked. My gob, my mouth, has been smacked. I, and, was, I was amazed. And you have some other videos as well from people, I, I believe, Mr. Duncan. Yes, we will show Lilia's video again in the second hour. But also we have another video from Olga as well. And this is Olga's video that she has sent in this week. And yes, we have even more snow. Hello, Mr. Duncan. Hello, classmates. It's Olga from Chelyabinsk from Russia. I'm walking now in the forest. Look around. It's a lot of snow today. Actually, we have more snow than now, but just what we have. It's a minus 15 today. I love to feed birds here, but now it's empty. Okay. So, bye. Oh, by the way, it's my dog. Bye. Your dog is very lovely, Olga. Thank you very much for that. And did I hear correctly? Did you say it's minus 15? Yes, I think that's what Olga said. That's very cold. Is that is that uh, a wood in your garden? <laughs> is I'm that, very impressed if it is. Yeah, is that your back garden, <laughs> Olga? Because, but, because we know your garden is lovely, so so that looks amazing. I love the birdhouse as well. There was a little birdhouse. That looks really solid. That looks like it was. That looks like the top of an, a tree that's been chopped down. That looks like the trunk of a tree and the birdhouse has been put on top. Oh, yes. Let's have a look at that. Let's uh, see which if... is a good idea. That'll be, be very stable. Let's Hello, we... Mr Duncan. Hello, classmate. Let's just see if I can get that on the screen. There it is. Look at that. That's an amazing birdhouse. I love it. Look at that. That's incredible. So I love that birdhouse. What someone's done it, as you said, Steve, it looks like someone has cut the tree down and then they've put the birdhouse yes. on top of the stump. <laughs> That's brilliant. Which is a good idea. What a fantastic idea. A substantial structure. Hmm. I would say that's not going to blow down. No. Unlike my Christmas lights at the moment, they are a little sensitive at the moment because we've had lots of strong winds and there you can see a live picture. So that, that actually is looking out of the window right now and you can see that the clouds are forming overhead. There is a little bit of blue sky though. I can see some blue sky. Now the lights are actually turned on, but of course because of the camera it doesn't pick the light up very well so it will only pick the light up when when it gets really really dark which it may be getting quite dark by the time we finish this live stream i hope so i hope by the time we finish it will be quite dark and then we can show you the the christmas lights in their full glory but at the moment it's a little bit it's too light and i'm quite pleased about these christmas lights mr duncan because they're low energy LEDs. Yes. So they're not uh, using up very much electricity or putting our electricity bill up. Uh, whereas in the past, you'd have a string of lights. How many lights altogether, Mr. Duncan, did you say you've got up outside the house? I, I, I actually have lost count. I think maybe, well, c including all of the lights uh, and most of these lights I've had for a long, long time. So most of these aren't new lights. They are actually very old lights. So I, I use them again and again every How year. How many lights, Mr. Duncan? I think maybe over at least maybe 2,000. 2,000 lights. 2,000. Some of them are very small lights. That's and, still a lot. And some of them are very large lights. Like, so if, if they were old-fashioned bulbs, they'd be using a lot of electricity. Yes. but, but And I wouldn't be pleased. But these are low energy <laughs> Low energy, so they, LEDs. So they don't use much much power, fortunately. We're talking about a lot of things today, by the way, because that's the reason why we're here. 
for, for you to get involved on the live chat and also to improve your listening skills so I hope this will be helpful and I'm going to try and talk a bit slower <laughs> uh, because people keep complaining that they can't understand not everybody just a few that they can't understand what I'm saying because when I get excited I start to talk faster and faster and faster and I shall try and avoid doing that today and I shall also try and avo avoid interrupting you Mr Duncan that's very nice like your button oh <laughs> so we'll have some fun as well and I've got lots of words connected with everyday words that are connected with the theatre yes because you are a bit of a thespian oh yes I love the stage. When I say thespian, thespian for, for, for those that can't hear very well, I said thespian, not lesbian. So Mr. Steve is, well, he, he might be both of those <laughs> things, I'm not sure, but he's definitely a thespian. Thespian means actor, so sometimes you like to act on the stage. So there are lots of words and expressions that you can use in everyday life that also refer to theatre or acting or being on the stage don't look them up i've got them here <laughs> don't, don't don't no googling no don't go to google don't google woogle somebody will or cheat <laughs> so, so we have to stop announcing what we're doing because people start getting onto google i know this is it nowadays though everyone is is smart when you think about it ah but i'm being smart because i've said that's what we're going to do but are we really Yes. Am I just saying that ah. so that people who want to Google yes. waste their time Googling instead of watching us? Maybe Mr. Steve is tricking you. Tricking you. Maybe yes. I'm not going to talk about words connected with the theatre. Yes. So will you take the bait? Ah, isn't wow. that interesting? So here is an interesting expression that we use in English. Take the bait. Now, the word bait is an interesting word because it can be used as a noun and also a verb as well. So bait can be something that you use to attract something towards you or to get something to come to you. If you want to trap something or catch something, you will put something there for them to eat or something that will attract them. Quite often in hunting or fishing, they will often use something called bait so if you are trying to catch fish for example you might put a little worm on the end of your fishing line and then you will put it in the water so the the little worm is the bait the, the fish will be attracted to the bait so that is as a noun and also as a verb you can bait something you can do something or say something that will get attention or a reaction. So you can go onto the internet and say something outrageous and then you will get lots of reaction. You will bait your viewers or you will bait your followers into reacting. So I think that's a pretty good expression. And the expression that I used earlier is take the bait. So Mr. Steve wants to know if you will take the bait. <laughs> It's a great expression, that. We're we, not going to bait anyone, though, are we, by saying something controversial? No, and there are lots of people on the internet, and we are talking about social media today as well. We are, we are going to talk about it because it seems to be a subject that comes around again and again. And there's one thing I've noticed, Steve, that there seems to be two, two groups of people now that use the internet, uh, and those groups are, can you guess... I want to be very rude, but I'm not going to be. I'm going to restrain myself, hold myself back okay. and not make sarcastic comments. Uh, I don't know. Tell us, oh. Mr. Duncan. After all that. Two, two groups of people that use the Internet. Well, you have young people. Yes. And you have us. Oh, right. OK. Old people. Aren't the people in between as well? Well, there's a there, that's what I mean. That's why it's two groups. There, there isn't a sort of middle group. So you have the young and you have the older. And that's it, really. That's really what the Internet is, is split into. So you have things on the Internet, social media that is attractive to younger people. And then you have other things on the Internet that are attractive or interesting to older people. And one thing I wanted to mention is 
Facebook. Now, Facebook is a site that's been around for a long time. But to younger people, young people, they don't see Facebook as being a very trendy thing anymore. And for older people, they are also starting to avoid using Facebook because, they? Of, because of all of the bad publicity. Oh, right. That, OK. It's been around recently. So it's probably I think it's fair to say that that's the, the two main groups that use the Internet, young people and old people. And there are things that are on there for younger people and things that are on there for, for older people, which leads me to the question, who do we relate to? What, what is the attraction out there? So do we have younger people watching us or older people or do we have lots of different ages? Well, yes. I, we do have I think we do have quite a mix because don't forget, we've got uh, uh, we've got who was the, who sent us the video a few weeks ago. Uh, 13. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, uh, that was Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder yes. sent us the video. We had a great video from Blue Thunder. And I suppose Blue Thunder is not here today, by the way. I don't know where he is. He wasn't here last week either. Right. A lot of people were getting worried last week. They were all they were all asking, where is Blue Thunder? We haven't seen him <laughs> on the live chat. I think we've got a lot of people of our age group watching. Yes. Because we know Sue Cat, certainly. We know, uh, I think, uh, quite a few people are similar ages to ourselves. So they relate to us, probably. Yes. Um, but you can you look at all these statistics, can you not, Mr. Duncan? I can find out. I can go into my analytics and I can see that there. But one of the interesting things is, is I have a large proportion of of mature people, older people that that are very silent on the live right. chat. So I think if you are, say, I want to say late, maybe late 20s or mid 30s you are more likely to get involved with the live chat. But I know that there are lots of people who watch who are much older than that. And I would love to hear from you. So are I, we just eye candy? I'm not. Do you think? What, us? Yes, I think we're eye candy. I don't think any... <laughs> I don't think anyone tunes in to watch us because they think we are sexy. I don't think so. Maybe not you, Mr. Duncan, but of course, as soon as I put that hat on, I turn into Lord Steve and suddenly I'm a different character. I will say that. You you were very popular. You were very popular last week as Lord Steve. I think we might be seeing more of Lord Steve in 2019. Maybe I'll just uh, become Lord Steve in real life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now yesterday you did something lovely. Steve did something lovely yesterday. We'll go to the live chat in a moment. But Steve did something very lovely for me. Didn't well, you? It wasn't really lovely, Mr. Duncan. I S wouldn't say lovely. S Steve was feeling very sorry for me because all of my clothes are falling to pieces. I was starting to look like Oliver, you know, that little orphan boy who wanted more porridge. Please, sir, can oh. I have some more? Maybe maybe not a, a young scruffy person, maybe an older person. Yes, an old scruffy person. An old scruffy person. <laughs> so so St Steve was feeling a little sympathetic. Well, some of his shirts. Mr Duncan wears his clothes till they literally are threadbare. I'm not joking. Yes, I, I wear my clothes until they fall to pieces. I don't like wasting money and I don't like buying things that just for the just for the sake of buying things, even though at this time of year, everyone is buying stuff. And I think you also uh, become quite comfortable with the clothes that you've had. I think a lot of us do. Hmm. I fall into that camp where I, w where I don't like to throw things away because I'm comfortable with them. Yes. They're familiar. I've had them a long time. They're comfortable to wear. And I don't like to change clothes. But you, I, I mean, I will. You, you take it to the other extreme. I do. So I, they literally fall off you well, or good, the arms fall yes, off. A good example is right here in front of you now. This shirt I'm wearing. This shirt, I, I bought this way back in 2007. So I, I've had this shirt for, for 11 years and it still looks OK. It's well, OK. It's, you've washed it either. I have washed it. <laughs> what a... What a cheeky man. So the, the, the thing I'm trying to say is yesterday, Steve, who was feeling very sorry for me, he took me out and he bought me some new clothes. 
<laughs> wasn't so much that I was feeling sorry for you. I was embarrassed to go out with you. I was embarrassed to go out with you, Mr Duncan, because I like to dress smartly, particularly when I'm Lord Steve. And then I've got you trailing along behind me in rags. So it casts a very bad impression on me. So that's the real motive, Mr Duncan, was oh. that I wanted you to look smart. Well, well, I'm only joking. I'm joking. This... I wanted you to look smart because really, you know, with your physique and uh, your youthfulness... You want to wear clothes to flatter you and to make you look younger, yes. not not to make you look scruffy. And the other thing, Mr Duncan, the problem with Mr Duncan is, even when he's got new clothes, he still looks scruffy because he never irons them. So he just washes a shirt, hangs it up and then puts it on. So it's all the collars are all creased up and it just looks a bit scruffy. It looks a bit like you're a tramp, Mr Duncan. You know, I'm, I'm trying, embarrassed to go out you. know, with you. I'm trying to say nice things about you and all you're doing <laughs> is throwing insults at me. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is Mr Steve took me out. He bought me some new clothes, some new T-shirts and also a lovely new shirt and also something to wear on the cold night, something I can wear to keep me nice and warm. It's your Christmas present. Oh, that's fine. That's lovely. <laughs> I, I'm happy with that. You know, I'm not a very demanding person. He's not. I'm not. I'm, ve I'm very simple in my taste, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> but is, so this is nothing to do with the fact that we're going for a very posh meal with your family. No, because I don't think you'll be wearing any of those things. Yeah, so that's what I thought. I thought he was doing it to make me look nice. Because yeah, apparently we're, go we're going with his family, you see, for a Christmas. Well, we might be going. We're going for a Christmas meal. Yeah. Well, but every time we go out on a Saturday, you don't look... You look scruffy. And I just think because you don't iron your... And you're wearing shirts with the collars that have all frayed at the edges. They are falling to pieces. And uh, it's just making me look bad. Yes. You know, I'm getting embarrassed to, to, to walk out with you. I will I will say and, that some, uh, some of my clothing has seen better days. And unfortunately, in society, not just today, but probably always, people judge you by your appearance. They judge you by your appearance. So if you look scruffy, they go, oh, look at him. Oh, dear. He hasn't even ironed his collar. There's a lot of... Well, I think people do in all societies, probably in all countries, the, f the only way you can judge somebody is to look at them. So if somebody has... Of course, that pe people can uh, dress up over the top uh, in very expensive clothes, but actually not live in an expensive house. Ah, oh, well, some people it, do it just just for show. It's just for show, but ah. at the same time, it doesn't matter because they're not going to follow you home. And a lot of people in this country, particularly, will have a very very posh car, uh, but they just live in a very small flat or something like that. But mm. when they're out and about, nobody knows that they only live in a small yeah. house, but they're driving a big. Jaguar or a big Mercedes and it makes them feel important and everyone will think oh they must have lots of money they must be important they must have lots of status this reminds me of that lovely jewelry yes this the lovely expression um, so when you see a person with a big car or, or they, they look like they have nice clothes you might say that they have they have uh, everything outside everything for show but nothing nothing in the refrigerator so they have nothing at home but everything is just done for show, to show off. But really, in reality, their life might be very simple. So, yes, I think that's what you're saying. Shall we have a look at the live yes, chat? But I just, you know, when, when I go out with Duncan, I don't want people looking at him thinking, oh, oh dear, what's, you know. You just want somebody to say, you don't want a reaction. I don't want you to be dri dripped in jewellery. No. Just to look smart. That's it. Don't have to be expensive clothes, just to look smart so that people aren't judging you. Because, unfortunately, people do. I think maybe uh, maybe over the past couple of years I have let myself go with my with my clothing. But also I think this year, I think this year I'm going to be honest with you. I, and you know I'm always honest. I always say things that come straight from the heart. I think I've aged a lot this year. I think I've got a lot older this year physically. I don't know why. There's just this this year. I feel as if I've aged by about five years. And don't mention my weight. Because I'm going to. Because I am losing weight. I lost half a stone. So nobody criticised me for that. But I do feel as if I've aged this year. 
more than any other year. Really? Yes. I don't know why. It's, it's all just, coming out on the live stream. It's just a feeling. Let's have a look at the live chat. So see here if people we, think you've aged. So here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Well, not necessarily by appearance, but by physically how you feel inside. So sometimes I feel I feel as if I'm a sort of like a 70 year old man. I feel like I've really, really aged badly. Lots of comments about your Christina says, are you a miser? No, you're not. Actually, Mr. Duncan is the opposite. Mr. When Mr. Duncan has any money, he spends it. The problem is he doesn't have much money. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So, uh, so that's that's what people don't understand when you do that. When you talk, okay, you, right, you, okay, I'll say, say that again. Yes. Uh, can you just bring the live chat down? Bring it down. I will down. try my best. Back Li or back? Let's go back. Let's view what was back. That's it. Stop. Uh, are you a miser? Yes. Mr. Well, I, I'm not a miser. No. I am a person who has never been attracted to money as a thing just to have a pile of. So I don't want to sit in a room and look at all of my money piled up. <laughs> in the corner of the room <laughs> <Would be. laughs> no but yes yeah, but that but that yes i'm just explaining that's yes. that's that's always been my way because as as i mentioned before i'm i, I didn't have a, a good sort of wealthy family a, a family that were rolling in money not like mr steve with his you know with, with his dad with all of his credit cards oh i know but then he would, he would open out like a like a big accordion you see that was all for show this strip this huge long wallet full of credit cards and, and in the 1970s if you had a credit card you were like you were like a, a, a multi-millionaire or something weren't you well yes you see I've I should have got to be careful what I say about my family so I don't offend people that just you know, I don't think any, I don't think I don't think anyone's watching us are they from I don't family? think anyone in your family or my no. family no one in my family no one in your family watches this exactly <laughs> so we can f talk freely and just uh, criticize them <laughs> Behind their backs. Yeah, we can, we can just say. <laughs> Only joking. No, it. but I, I, you know, I grew up in a family where it was, it, a, a lot of it was sort of for show. Um, we didn't have much money, really. But uh, parents used to, one well, with dad, let's put it this way, used to spend a lot of money. Uh, and But really, we didn't have very much. And uh, uh, I'm quite proud of the fact that everything I've got I've earned myself. That's it. Well, you are you are what I call I, I mean, I always say that you are very successful, certainly in your job and over the years. Since well, I've I, never had to take money from anyone. No. And that's the same with me. I've no, I've never borrowed money from my family. I've never I've never gone to anyone and said, please, please can I borrow some money? So if I have no money, I have no money. If I have some money, I have some money. But I don't lie awake at night wishing that I had lots of money. It isn't a big thing in my life. No, you, you're not material. You're not materialistic at all. No, people are saying that I'm being uh, being uh, unkind to you. I think so. Anna has said that I've been rude. So uh, I don't mean to be rude, but well, I'm just joking, really. <laughs> Mr. Duncan knows I'm joking. Uh, uh, don't you, Mr. Duncan? <laughs> Sukat. <laughs> Sukat says something funny. I remember hearing Jerry Seinfeld. He said in one of his episodes, <laughs> Men use their clothes until they evaporate. I think so. Yes, that's, that's true. It's just it's just vapor until until the molecules have broken down until they are just atoms floating in the air. And most <laughs> most there aren't many men, men who are married uh, to women. The women often buy the clothes for the man because they are probably the uh, getting concerned that their husband is not looking uh, presentable. And so that reflects badly on them when they're going <laughs> out together yes. because you might bump into people that you know. So you might be out with your husband and he's wearing these old scruffy clothes. <laughs> and uh, But you always dress up very smartly and then uh, you meet, with, see, meet up with friends or bump into friends and they're thinking... Oh, look at her husband. Oh, what's you know? He's a bit scruffy. So yes. it's all about perception. It's all about. It's it's actually what it is. Is is, is you're worrying about what other people think, yes, that's it. which you shouldn't do. Yes. But we all do. We all do. But I, I think I think when you get to a certain age, and maybe that's part of it. So in the past, I used to like wearing nice clothes. But I think now, because I'm older, I don't feel as if it's so important. I don't I don't feel as if my clothes define me as a human being. 
So mm. there are other qualities that I... do like clothes because you've got some very smart clothes that you bought in China. Well, that's it. But that's... that's uh... But we're going back now to, you know, 12 years ago. And you go, anyway, I'm smartening you up. You're losing weight and uh, we're smartening you up. <laughs> And you're going to look 10 years younger. I'm going to be a new man. You're going to be a new man. It's it's a resurgence of Mr. Duncan's youthfulness. <laughs> My goodness. And uh, th- you'll get a whole new following I think, I by think, the time I finish with you, I Mr. Think, Duncan. I think that is long since gone. Sue Cat says she does very little ironing. I do very little ironing. I only iron things that people will see. <laughs> so I, shirt collars. Do you know, I used to just iron shirt collars and the front of the shirt. Talking of clothing, Jamelia asks a very interesting question. What about wearing Christmas jumpers Ooh. because of the festive season? Now, some people do. They like to wear clothing that, that reflects the, the Christmas season. Um, we're not doing anything at the moment because it's a little bit too early. So we haven't done anything yet, but we might do something from next week as we get closer. Yes, because to... we're also... We're also aware that lots of people that watch us don't celebrate Christmas. Well, this so is we it. don't want to be too heavy on Christmas because lots of people don't celebrate it. Yes. Uh, but uh, we did look, yet when we went out shopping yesterday, we saw some Christmas jumpers, didn't we? We did see them, but they, 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 weren't, they weren't the ones I wanted to buy. They, they, they didn't look like something that I would feel happy wearing, so we didn't bother. Plus also, they were £30 each. Yes. There was... And we didn't want to spend £30 on something that we would only wear once. Well, actually, it was, it was £30, £30 for two, which seems OK, but... but oh, then I mean, it was in one shop. But we will only wear them one time. It was 30, they were £30 <laughs> each when we went to another shop. It's a little bit wasteful, I But think. would you like to see us wearing... Christmas jumpers. If you do, please donate and we'll <laughs> buy some Christmas jumpers and we'll wear oh, them. You're doing it again, you see. <laughs> so you see, you're talking and sort of going into laughter at the same time. And I think that's when people can't understand you. Even I can't understand you when you do that. What did I say? I don't know. You went... <laughs> okay, what I said was, if, if there is a, a lot of people that wish to see us wearing Christmas jumpers... Maybe that they can donate a small sum of money oh, and then we can go and buy some Christmas jumpers uh, and brighten up the live stream. Oh. Because I didn't want to spend uh, my hard-earned cash on uh, 30 uh, on thirty pound Christmas jumpers. Yep. Uh, we've, got, we've got some revelations here of ages. So, so Connell is 40. Oh. And... and um, Mick Shalland, Mick Shalland is 47 and Olga is 39. That's very kind of you. Palmara, it's, it's very brave. Thank you very much for, for sharing your age with us. That's really nice. Palmara is 61. Now, oh. Palmara, Palmyra might be the most mature person on here. I'm not sure, but that's amazing. It's admitted it. Uh, also, Tran, Tran Carr says I am only 12. So we seem to have lots of different age groups. Martha said she's nearly 12. Um, yes, really? Martha Poland. Well, we, 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 we heard this in the past about Martha. So I know Martha is young. Also, we have somebody else. 70. We Congratulations. Have so- we have someone who is 70. 70. That's, that's fantastic. In I think that looks that looks to me like Russian. Karuna is 18 from Nepal. Wow. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. As we go, we've got such a broad <laughs> breadth of ages. So we've, we've got a, a large or wide age range watching. So that's, I thought that was interesting to mention because it would appear that the Internet is a place where only young people go. But of course, we are quite unusual. In fact, we are, we are probably one of the oldest people or oldest persons doing this. Doing on this YouTube, yes. certainly on YouTube and doing it live, so we might be the the oldest, and also, of course, I'm I'm the longest English teacher, as far as being on YouTube is concerned. Oh, Maya's also said that I've been cruel with you, Mister Duncan. You have. You've been very mean. Ah, oh, but I don't. It's it, I don't mean to be cruel. It's just a joke, really, yes. because we've known each other for such a long time. Mister Duncan knows that I don't really mean it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Louis mm. says that's terrible news an excellent teacher that has no money to get new clothes I don't think it's really like that it's just that I'm not I'm not that bothered about it but I think it bothers Steve well because you I think you need to <laughs> In order to look your best, I think when you go out, if you look your best, you feel more confident. And uh, if you're wearing clothes, the right colours uh, and clothes that are, you don't have to buy lots of expensive clothes. But I think if you've got a nice shirt, you certainly need to iron it. I'm going to have, I think what it is, is if I don't, if, if Mr. Duncan doesn't iron his own clothes, I'm going to have to iron them for him. OK. It's going to have to be the only way. <laughs> um, I don't want to because I, I don't iron jeans. No. Because I, 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 the only things I iron are work shirts. Well, any, any shirt with a collar. Although I haven't ironed this one, Mr. Yes, Duncan. Where, where are you going with this? Is this is this anything to do with today's subject? Anything for anything anything? Well, yes. What do people? It'd be what? interesting to see what do people iron. What? Because that. I'm sorry. Please don't click away. We're not doing that really. <laughs> okay. Change the subject. I think Steve is trying to actually get rid of the, the few remaining viewers that we have. What have I got here, Mr. Duncan? It looks like you've got something big in your hand. What I've is got it? Lots of words. That's, that's very annoying, by the way. Lots of words connected with the theatre that are used in every day. Or are they? The English. That are used in everyday language. The English language is not just for young people, it says here on the live chat. Let's just have a look, shall we? Ah, OK, then that's interesting. English language is not just for young people. I know that. I'm very aware of that. Somebody says they're 82. Oh, where? Uh, Burlop, Steph says, Louis Mendes, really 82? Louis Mendes? Oh, I don't Let's know. Let's go back. Let's have a look. Louis. Did Louis say he's 82? Oh, yes. Louis. Wow. Louis, I think it's official that you are the, the oldest person on here. That's nothing to be ashamed of, by the way, because us two, Steve and myself, we are both... Elderly as well. I wouldn't say elderly. Steve's elderly, not me. OK, middle I'll, age. I've changed my mind. I, Manor, Manor is 12. <laughs> Olga, 59. Thank you so much for telling us your ages. That's <laughs> very, uh, that's very, very open. Yes, very interesting. So so actually quite a wide age range. But yeah, but I, I, I don't want to seem I don't want to seem rude mentioning that because I wanted to talk about the fact that certain things on the Internet seem seem to be aimed at people that are younger. Uh, certainly certain types of activity like gaming, playing games. And that's what I mentioned earlier, Steve, about live streaming. So YouTube doesn't mind offering live streaming or promoting people that are doing the gaming but for us it's much harder because we are not doing something that's seen as that's seen as being trendy yeah so you, you, you nobody wants to want nobody wants to sponsor you or, no. sponsor, well, or advertise any products well that's not correct because uh, over the years i've had a lot of people who want to sponsor me but that means that I have to put lots of commercials and mention lots of people's products and websites and things like that, which, of course, is something I don't want to do because it will eventually annoy you and then you will go away. So I've always avoided that. Even now, I still get people writing to me, wanting me to mention a website or mention something. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to sell out in that way because I think it will spoil the effect of of this live stream i know other people do it and they they don't mind doing it but i'm, I'm not a big fan of it tomek likes us talking about ironing he says it's an interesting subject well the thing is tomek is that mr duncan uh, is in charge of this show and if he doesn't want to talk about ironing then uh, i'm afraid we can't talk about ironing i said you could always <laughs> you could always start your own live stream steve where you talk about ironing all the time uh, Mis oh. Mr. Steve's ironing live stream, where where Mr. Steve stands all day, he will stand behind an ironing board and he will iron his clothes all day. Uh, uh, back to Rye. Rye is uh, this is my first live stream. Hello, Backtree. Hello, Backtree Try or Backtree Rye or Back Back. Bark tea, I think it's pronounced, isn't it? Bark tea rye. Hello to you and welcome. It's your first time. I think we'll. we'll... Ove, Ove, Ove Gun Music. Wait there. Go Wait on. There. Calm down, Steve. 
Thank you. Back, back to you, Rye. Congratulations. Oh, I see. Right, clapping. Yes. Yeah. That's what we do. So it's your first time. You get Go some. Back. You get some lovely applause. Somebody wanted to met you to mention their name. There we go. Ovgun Music. Please. Ovgun or Ovgun. Ovgun mu Music. Hello to Ovgun Music. And don't be so sad. Don't worry. Don't frown. What's wonderful is that people are wanting to learn a language no matter what age they are. Uh, Ute R said that, says that they have a Latin student who's 82 years old. I suppose. And that is the secret, I think. When you get older... The secret to staying young, keeping healthy, keeping your mental health mm. is to keep on doing things, learning new languages, learning an instrument, yes. joining groups, doing I, things. I suppose so. Yes, I, I stand corrected there. So we have all age groups watching. But have you ever heard that there is a new website or a new social media craze that is sweeping the Internet called TikTok? And apparently that's the latest one. That's where all all the young people are going now in, 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 in their millions to watch this particular social media site called Tik Never TikTok. Never heard of it, Mr Duncan. Have you heard of it out there? If you are under the age of 15, maybe you've heard of it. So, yes, there is. And that's the one that everyone's going to now. So younger people are, are, are leaving Facebook. Oh, it's like Facebook, is it? No. It's very different. It's similar to YouTube. But it's a social media site. That's it? it. Social media and it's video sharing and people can share videos with each other. And also you can sh you can you can share another person's video whilst at the same time appearing on the video. Talking about the video that they're watching. Can you believe it? Is this is this a site like WhatsApp where uh, children go on there so that their parents uh, can't secretly watch them because apparently that in Facebook... Well, what, WhatsApp is just text messaging. That's right, but I think it's it's quite secure, isn't it? So I think youngsters were going on to that site because their parents, they could message each other uh, and their parents can't monitor what they're doing because um, I think that's what used to happen a lot with Facebook. Okay. Parents would be spying on their children to see what they're getting up to because they're because you can friend somebody can't you or you can you can look at anybody's yes, site on, on that's Facebook. It. But, but Facebook now is seen as being for, for old people. So to, yes, but that's what that's but, why that's what I'm saying, because a lot of people, a lot of younger people didn't want to use Facebook because they didn't want their parents to know no. what they were doing. Hmm. So maybe tick. Yeah, that is true, Mr. Duncan. But TikTok is is a way of, of sharing videos. So it's video based. Fine. So yes. it's, it's like it's like YouTube. But but it it involves a lot more interaction. So one person interacts with a video that they're watching at that moment, and and it's very unusual. And that does happen here on YouTube, but there are there are not so many people doing that. So it's become a young person's oh. thing now, and TikTok is apparently the latest thing. Tias is on TikTok, but she doesn't like it. Oh okay. Uh, it's too much show up. Yes, is it? Is that? I think. I think TS means lots of people just sort of showing off. That's it. Maybe. Yes. Yes, it is. It's uh, lots of lots of young people showing their singing skills or maybe showing showing that off their house or their car or their, their new device that they've bought. So, yes, it, it is a bit like that. But yes, it's very much for for what you what you would call younger people, I think. So we all, so anybody over the age of 40, let's all go on TikTok and ruin it for all these <laughs> youngsters because as soon as people of our age go on to it, that somebody will have to nah, yes, that's what we'll do, Mr. This, Duncan. This is what we should do. Uh, everybody over the age of 40 should should group together and wherever the young people are going, we should we should just invade it. And then talk about ironing all day. So we could we could show yes. ironing videos. Ah, but Mr. Duncan, you, what you we need, what we need like to that. do first is that we need to invent a new form of social media. <laughs> well, uh, and that, no, we, we will introduce it. We will produce a new form of social media. Yeah, we'll go onto TikTok. We'll ruin TikTok for That's all it. the youngsters and make it and ours. We'll, and we'll start to, no, and we'll start talking about this this other new social media that we've invented. Uh, that we've got the rights to, that all the young people are going to, and we'll send them all to our new site, and then we'll make lots of money, Mr Duncan. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> I think I think some adults yes. might have a problem with that. 
No, that's what we're going to. That's what I'm going to. So, that's what I'm going to invent. So what you've just said there, Steve, is you're going to go to TikTok and lure young people away. I'm going to go on dressed as Lord Steve. No, what I mean... No, you're misunderstanding me, sounds, Mr Duncan. This sounds very dodgy. <laughs> you're misunderstanding me, Mr Duncan. I'm <laughs> using this as a money-making enterprise. Oh, OK. So I'm going to invent a new social media, and which is... I've got the rights to it. And then we're going to go on to TikTok and be old people and ruin it for all the youngsters on TikTok. <laughs> and then we're going to tell them, we're going to say, oh, we're going to talk about this new social media, and then they'll all go to this yes. one, then we'll aren't, make lots of money. Aren't you just explaining the thing you just explained? Yes, but you didn't understand the reason I was doing yes. it. You seem to think I was luring young people in some bizarre... I'm only luring them there so I can make lots of money out of them. That's OK, then. It did sound a bit... A bit strange no it wasn't okay. i think it was your mind is what's going on in your mind mr well, duncan this is what but 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 parents do worry about what their children are are doing on the internet it seems to to become a big thing at the moment um, children parents always worry about their children tumblr this week tumblr that's another one have you ever been on tumblr that isn't that a tumblr no that's that's not a tumblr that's a glass but no, Tumblr is another type of social media site where lots of people of a certain age join together. Younger or older? Again, younger. Oh, OK. Yes. I, I, I would say that 99.9% of everything that happens on the Internet is aimed at young people. Uh, and we are, are very much in the margin. Well, I'm not even on Facebook. <laughs> He's no good looking for me. You hate the Internet. I but well I don't like I mean I know it's got its place and you you need to keep up with the times and 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 be involved in what's going on in the world but so I I don't have a well actually I do have a Facebook account but that's only because of of a theater group where we have a, a we have a face group a Facebook account just for one of the theater groups I'm in so that we can message it it's a closed group yes but I'm not I don't go on there for, I don't have I don't communicate with any friends on Facebook or any social media. For there that there is a re OK, then. Oh, I've OK. Got some we, WhatsApp. We, we, uh, we've got the idea, Steve. We've got to we've got to be careful of time. Yes, because I've got all these words you're, you're distracting me, Mr. Yes, Duncan. OK, you are. I thought you weren't going to talk all over me. Oh, it's, you knew I, I, I was joking. Yes. I mean. <laughs> good luck with the subtitle. <laughs> good luck with the subtitles. That's all I can say. We're only joke banter, banter. But, but yes, we do have some words today that are connected to the theatre and are acting, but also they can be used in everyday life. We'll have a look at those in a moment. Don't worry, Steve. <laughs> Let's have a look at again once more at the videos that were sent to us this week. Yes. Well, first of all, Catherine, Catherine Foggs sent this lovely picture. So this is a photograph sent by Catherine. Look at those lovely trees. That is a lovely view. I like your view, Catherine. There's some nice conifers there. And also we had some other messages as well. We had a lovely message from Lilia. Hi, Mr. Duncan. Hello there, Mr. Steve. Hello, folks from the live chat who might be watching this video right now. My name is Lilia. I'm 27 years old and I'm currently living in Kyiv, which is the capital of Ukraine. As you can see, we're having a proper winter around. We're having a very snowy one this year. And in this video, I really want to take you along with me on a little walk around my neighbourhood, the places where I really like to go and visit. And Oh, and by the way, I hope my mum doesn't watch this video because if she does, she would be very unhappy because I'm not wearing my hat today. So here is the first thing that I can see when I leave the house. I'm living in an old block of flats, which is sometimes referred to as a Hrushovka because it was built in the 60s by Soviet leader Nikita Hrushchev. Not literally him, but you get the idea. And here is a little park where I like to go to take my mind off things. Here is what it sounds like without the music. My husband, myself and our little cat are living in what I'd call a former industrial area of Kyiv. There used to be quite a lot of plants and factories here, which no longer function. There is a very special factory not very far from our home. 
This is a factory where my grandfather and his team used to work on the first ever programmable calculator. If you have no idea what it is and how it works, don't worry, I don't know that either. The only thing I do know though is that my grandfather's endeavours later grew into what we now know as a PC or a personal computer. So I'm very proud to walk here. It's not always that magical to be fair. Snow often melts into brown slush, everyone's shoes are caked in mud and it doesn't look that festive if I'm honest. But I believe if your heart is warm and you keep celebrating secretly no matter what, no weather can ruin the holiday spirit for you then. My mum always told me that if you're in no mood to celebrate New Year or Christmas, you can always change it and get happier in a flash. Very often the festive mood is our choice. So let's go for it. Happy holidays everyone. Thank you very much Lilia for that. And also we had a nice video message from Olga. Hello Mr Duncan. Hello classmates. It's Olga from Chelyabinsk from Russia. I'm walking now in the forest. Look around. It's a lot of snow today. Actually, we have more snow than now, but just what we have. It's a minus 15 today. I love to feed birds here, but now it's empty. Okay. So, bye. Oh, by the way, it's my dog. Bye. So what is your dog's name? That's what I want to know. What is your dog's name? What is it called? It's, it's like a little little tiny dog. And your accent, Lilia, we, I want to know where you're from. Oh. Um, I'm thinking Derbyshire, but I might be wrong. Derbyshire? Hmm. Why, why do you think that? I don't know. I just do. Please, please tell us. But I don't, I don't think Lilia is a native speaker of English. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I see. It's a, that's definitely a, a British. That's an accent, a regional accent. I would say. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I see. Maybe I'm wrong. Please so tell us if we've got this completely wrong. I apologise on behalf of Mr. Steve and myself. But, but yes. It, so where? What? What is actually your original nationality? Where, where, where did you learn English? I can tell that Mr. Steve is very intrigued. I'm intrigued. He's intrigued. Intrigued. Intri yes, because he talks over me as I'm saying things. <laughs> intrigued. See, I've got to the end of the sentence. Now you can talk. Shall I do my words, Mr. Duncan? You're doing words? Let's have a quick look at the live chat because lots of people are getting very excited by Lilia's video and also Olga as well. You are more than welcome. From Kiev, says Sue Cat. You are more than welcome to uh, send your videos. A few people asking, how do I send my videos? I will put that on the live chat right now. So just bear with me. I am now going to put my email address on the live chat. Du, 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 du. This is not very exciting, but it's very useful. Mr. Duncan at and there it is. There it is. That's it. Yes, on the screen right now. So that is my email address for those that are wondering. Mr. Duncan at ymail.com. So now you know. And look at that. Lilia says she is from the Ukraine, and we've just given her. An amazing compliment. Oh, OK, then. That's it, then. Mm. That, that's, well, well, I, I could kind of because I'm quite good with accents, so I can I can always tell when an accent is maybe uh, acquired, if that makes sense. Uh, so but excellent. I, my, my jaw dropped open. This Where morning. did you learn English? But, Who taught you English? Yeah, my jaw dropped open. But but where did you learn English? Was it was it from us? Was well, it was it from me? Well, the, the you, you have acquired a, a slight accent. Very understandable. Everyone's got accents. But I'm, so I'm just wondering uh, who taught you English? Yes, very good. Please tell us. Very good. Uh, but anyway, excellent. Both both videos. Excellent. Where was the second one? Who was the second one? That's from? Olga. Also in Russia. Olga. in Yes. What wonderful landscape. Yes. Because that well, the snow is is a big clue. Because, of course, they, they have snow at this time of year, lots and lots of snow. 
Having said that, we've had no snow, Steve. Good. I'll tell you why. <laughs> why? Because my car doesn't oh. have winter tyres on it anymore. Please don't talk about cars. So we don't want snow because my company won't let me put winter tyres on my car. And I'm scared because if we get snow, we won't. I won't be able to drive anywhere. Uh, but that's another story. Do you want to see something amazing? Uh, to, whilst, no. whilst we're talking, <laughs> whilst we're talking about snow, we are now going to show you something quite incredible. This is Mr. Steve and myself playing in the snow. But this is no ordinary video because this is 17 years ago. So this video you are about to see was made before YouTube, before Facebook, before everything. It was made way back in 2001. Ooh. Look at this. See, watch this, Steve. So there it is way back in 2001. And oh, look, there's little flat Eric. So this is 17 years ago. Can you believe it? I can't remember 17 years ago, Mr. Duncan. Do you remember us making this video? Um, vaguely. So this wasn't filmed on a digital camera. This was actually filmed on a video camera using tape. So that's how old this is. So you can see that this is a snowy day way back in 2001, where we used to live many, many years ago. And there's Steve. So there is Mr. Steve, and there is... I haven't aged a bit. And there's me, 17 years ago. Wow. Can you believe it? I've still got that hat. you still got the hat, and I think you've still got the coat. That's, oh, yes, I, I use that coat for gardening in. Yes, so Steve still wears that blue coat, and also that hat. I'm taking it there's, there's no sound on this video. There is a bit of music playing in the background whilst we speak. Oh. But there, look at that. So there's me 17 years ago and there's Steve. Looking annoyed. Looking slightly annoyed. But you, but we were talking earlier about old clothes, but you still have those clothes as well. I do. Yes. But, but that anorak, the coat I'm wearing and the hat I'm wearing, I don't have any more. So that's interesting. That's interesting that I still got lots of old clothes and you have got rid of all those that you're wearing on the video. Yes. So that's strange that we mentioned earlier that I'm the one that wears all the old clothes. But in this video, you're, you're wearing clothing that you still wear now, today. Mm, but it was, yeah, it's true. But I don't use it, uh, I, only, I only use that old coat when I'm in the garden. I don't wear that out anywhere. Whereas you would wear it if, we went in, if you went into public. Yes, that's it. I, I would wear it as smart clothing. I suppose, yes, that's a good point. So there is Steve, 17 years ago. Oh my goodness, you look so young there. Look how young Steve looks. I don't look any different, Mr Duncan. I look exactly the same. And there, and there is Steve. It looks like he's, he's about to throw a snowball at me. And there's me. Oh, way back in 2001. Wow. Oh my goodness. Isn't that incredible? Oh my, oh I feel so, now I do feel old. Here we go. So this is Steve playing in the snow 17 years ago. I'm <laughs> smiling, which is unusual. Yes, it's very interesting. Remember when Steve used to smile? <laughs> I, 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 I vaguely remember. Was I happy then? You look happy. Happy. It's happy, it's a very strange word for Steve to use, but you look happy. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. That is actually us 17 years ago. Oh, look how young I look. I look so young. I don't know where Steve's gone. He's just run off. <laughs> Come back, Steve. We need you. Oh, I know what he's doing. He's going to get the uh, hat. There we go. So you just saw the hat. Oh, oh. no, it won't, it won't work, <laughs> you see. Oh. This is what happens when Steve... No, no, no it's... <laughs> it doesn't work. Well done, Steve. I've still got the old hat is it? and coat, but we can't see it because of technical reasons technical, which we won't go into. That's it. Yes, please don't go into the technical reasons. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right, let's get this show on the road, Mr Duncan. OK, so we have some words and expressions, and, and they are connected to the theatre that are used in everyday language but they are used in everyday chit chat 
So, yes, let's do it now, shall we? Here we go. The first one is let's get this show on the road. Let's get this show on Which the I'm road. I'm not sure you're talking over me now, getting your own back. So uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's actually a theatre word. It may be used, but uh, it probably is. But if you use the phrase "let's get this show on the road," that means just put a plan into action to just start something. It could be anything. You could be you could be uh, at a, starting a wedding ceremony, and everyone's ready to go. And somebody might just say, "Come on, let's get this show on the road. Let's get it started." You made lots of plans to do the wedding. Let's get it going. You might be at a conference and it's about to start and the people organising it might say, might say, let's get this show on the road. We, we use it quite a lot for, it's quite funny to use this expression for uh, quite minor tasks that you're going to do. So you might use it if you're about to start some decorating. Hmm. You might just say, come on, let's get this show on the road. You're only going to decorate, but it's quite funny to use it. We hmm. often use this phrase ourselves don't That's we it. when we're starting uh, our live stream so we might but just before we start we say okay steve let's let's get this show on the road yes it's something you've <laughs> planned but you don't it doesn't have to be a show it could be it could be anything any activity you could be just decorating and it's funny to say come on let's get this show on the road <laughs> let's get started with something yes and it could be just a small thing um a dress rehearsal. Ah. A dress rehearsal. Now, in, in the theatre, a dress rehearsal is the final rehearsal before the opening night, before the first performance. Uh, and it's traditionally the one where you put all your costume and makeup on because you would have been doing lots of rehearsals before that, mm -hmm. but you'd have just been wearing ordinary clothes. But in the dress rehearsal, everybody uses, puts the proper costumes on and puts all the makeup on but in everyday life uh you can say a dress rehearsal it, it, it is you can use this expression in everyday life just for a general rehearsal for anything yes so you might be at work and you might want to have a presentation to do and uh you might want to practice it and have a, a, a before the when you've got to actually do it in front of everybody so you just have a little dress rehearsal uh, we might do that when we're coming on live. We might practice things beforehand, have a little dress rehearsal, just a little rehearsal, just practice everything. Do we ever rehearse this? We have done in the past. I, I, not very often, though. Normally when we come on, it's just spontaneous. If you're going to do any type of performance, <laughs> doesn't have to be in the theatre, you'll want to rehearse it or practice it. And uh, you'll have you'll call it a dress rehearsal. All I can say is from I, the theatre. All I can say is I wish, I wish this was rehearsed. <laughs> break a leg, break a leg, Mr. Duncan. Not literally. It's a theatre expression that means good luck, good luck on your performance. Mm. But you can use this in everyday life. It um, the origins of it are quite uh, uh, up for debate. Nobody quite knows where it where it comes from, but they think it's because of the superstitious nature of theatre people, actors and in theatre, because obviously you don't want things to go wrong. Uh, instead of saying good luck, uh, because you're worried about the spirits might do the opposite and actually have, have, you have bad luck. So if you say to somebody, break a leg, that's bad luck, uh, you think that the opposite will happen. It's just superstition. Yes. Whether it comes from that, we don't know. It's a bit like men it's a bit like mentioning the Shakespeare play Macbeth. Yes, you are not supposed to mention Macbeth if you are about to perform it. Isn't that strange? That is strange. That is another thea superstition. Another theatrical superstition. But you can use this if somebody's got a wedding. Uh, you can, you can, and they've got to the best man's got to make a presentation. You might say, "Or oh, break a leg." Yes. In other words. Good luck. I hope it goes well. Good luck. In, in a job interview, you might say to somebody, hope it goes well, break a leg. You know, so hope it's good luck. It's a sort of a good luck wish. But you don't, you can use it in everyday life. Uh, Q, Q. Uh, so this is a signal to do something in the theatre. A Q is a signal to do something. If somebody uh, says a certain line, 
that means that you've got to, uh, when they say that certain line you've got to say a certain line after that it that's your cue uh, it might be that somebody says a certain line and then you've got to come on to the stage mm. that's a signal a cue is a, is another word really for a signal mm. to do something and it might doesn't have to be the actors it could be the technicians it could be the musical director if it's a musical play uh, he's got to listen out or she the musical director has got to listen out for a certain word or phrase and that means they've got to start the orchestra and start a song. It's a signal to do something. Yes. So you can use it in everyday life as well. It's just a cue, a signal mm. to do something. It's interesting to note that in television they also use the same thing so they have a cue. Normally it's a hand signal. So when maybe the TV camera goes on to the presenter the person operating the camera or the producer or the director will maybe give them a countdown. Three, two, one, now. And that is the cue. So when the director does that, it means you are now on camera. You are now on. So that is also a, a type of cue. Yes, it's, it's a signal to do something. And you can use it in general life as well. Uh, I'm in sales and often you're, you're listening for, for selling cues. So you're listening for a customer. You're, you're saying things to a customer and you're listening for buying signals or, or buying cues. And then uh, you might then ask for the business. So it, it, it just, it's not just using the theatre. Green room. Green room. Now, the green room is an area uh, somewhere backstage it's like a waiting area where performers will... It's not the dressing room. It's a, it's a separate thing, separate room where people are waiting to go on to perform something. Mm. Usually they've got refreshments available. Apparently it used to be called a green room because it was soundproofed and they used to have green cloth in there everywhere so it was soundproofed and you wouldn't get dirty before you went on uh, to do your performances it's just like a waiting area but it's so it's any area really where you're waiting to go on before a performance and people sometimes use that phrase uh in in everyday life it's also a very violent film starring patrick stewart called green room house house well the uh, a theater uh, it's traditionally called a house, the auditorium, the area where the where the uh, uh, the audience sits. It's called the house, and often and and also the audience themselves are called house mm. as well. So it's the auditorium or it's the audience, mm. and then from that you have expressions like full house, which means that the auditorium is full, mm. all the seats are taken. Yes. Uh, uh, brought down the house if a performer brings down the house it means that they uh, generate spontaneous applause in the audience mm. their performance is so good they bring down the house the, mm. the, 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 the clapping is so loud that the, 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 the house collapses under the, under the sound of, of, of all the clapping obviously that's not literally uh, another phrase would be there wasn't a dry eye in the house uh, which means that all the audience were crying because the performance was so wonderful and it brought everybody to tears. Uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Every mm. And you can use that expression in, in everyday language yeah. as well. So the house is a generic term for the theatre itself, the stage or the audience. So it can be used in many ways. Also in gambling, of course, if you go to a casino, you have to follow the house rules or, or the, the, the the laws or the rules that are put in place by that particular casino. So there are also rules. house rules. Yes. So house can be used actually in many ways. It might be a good idea to do that one week. We just find one word, house, and we, yes. we talk about all the different ways it can be used because there are so many. Someone might, someone might tell uh, a sad story at work, and you might say, oh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Yes. You can use that expression. Everyone was crying. Yes. Uh, there we go. So here's another one. Limelight. Ah. Limelight. Now, theatres, before electricity, theatres used to be lit uh, by 
by shining by by burning uh, calcium uh, calcium oxide they, they call it quick lime uh, and it was a way of getting a very bright light onto the stage so that the actors could be seen because they didn't have electricity and candles weren't bright enough but if you if you actually burnt this substance called uh, quick lime you got a very white bright light which was w w would light the stage mm. and that expression has sort of stuck over the years and it's used in everyday language to mean somebody who wants all the attention so somebody uh, uh, who who is in the limelight is somebody who's getting all the attention. So you can say, oh, Jill, oh, trust her. She likes, she always likes to be in the limelight. Yes. It doesn't mean you're literally light shining at you. It just means you're the person who wants all the attention mm. or the person who's getting all the attention. That's it. So you might try to steal someone's limelight. Yes. You want to take the glory away from another person. And that can be used generically in everyday life. Exactly. You often see that at a wedding, for example, you might go to a wedding and uh, the bride is the centre of attention at a wedding. But you might somebody might try and steal their limelight by dressing up more glamorously. And uh, that's actually quite a bad thing to do at a wedding to try and steal the limelight away from the, uh, uh, the people getting married, you know, the, the bridegroom. Uh, so steer the limelight. Somebody always wants to be on show. Can I just mention something? Matrix mentions a, a very interesting thing. Thank you so much for making these videos. Could you please make some videos about sense, sight, hearing, taste, smell? Well, Matrix, there is a video on my YouTube channel all about the senses uh, and all the words connected to it. So there is actually a video lesson so if you go to my playlists, you will find on the playlist for my learning English videos, there is a video lesson all about senses. I'm sure someone on the live chat will help you there with maybe the link or the, the actual lesson number. But yes, I made I made a video lesson all about the senses. Definitely. Another one, Steve. Here we go. Another one. Upstage. Ah. Upstage. Now, the part of a stage, it's sometimes the part of a stage, which is the is the upstage part of the, it is that actually at the back. You would think the upstage would be at the front, but yes. it's not. It's at the back. I thought that. Yes. Ex ex yeah, exactly. So uh, stages used to be sloped downwards towards the front. Oh. Uh, so uh, uh, backstage means at the back. Uh, sorry, upstage means the, the, the highest part of the stage, which was always traditionally at the back. And they, they were sloped like that so that the audience could see, uh, could, could see the performance. The people used uh, to fall over there. Well, I mean, I, I, I've been on stage in, in the Grand Theatre in Wolverhampton, and that's a very old theatre. And that actually has quite a big slope on it. It slopes from back to front. Oh. So it's a proper old fashioned stage. And so if you're and we had we did a performance once uh, where people had to be on stage in roller skates. And what they didn't realize is in all the <clears throat> in all the rehearsals, we did all the rehearsals on a flat uh, in the hall where we rehearsed, which was flat. And then when we, got, when we got onto the stage, we suddenly realized there was a big slope on the stage and everyone was going off the <laughs> nearly going off the edge of the stage. What show was uh, that? That was Return to the Forbidden Planet. Somebody had roller skates in, in that. Uh -huh. And they, had, they, they were very unprepared for the fact that there was quite a big slope on the stage. Oh. So, uh, so upstage is up, meaning literally going up, which is the, actually at the back of a stage. Yes. So, and so upstage is the back. What, so downstage is downstage the front. Downstage is, is the front. OK, so upstage, the back, downstage... The front. But that's using it as a noun. OK. But as a verb to upstage somebody, ah. which is where I was coming to, means to, to go against direction, to go against etiquette, to do something to uh, make yourself stand out when you shouldn't. Ah. So if you upstage somebody 
on, on, in, in, uh, in a theatrical performance. It means you're moving around at the back, doing something you shouldn't be doing when somebody else is performing. Yes. So you're stealing the limelight in a way, ah. which is use that expression, yes. to upstage somebody to try and appear, try and get attention drawn onto yourself yes. when you shouldn't do it. And on the stage, that's very... That's a, seen as a very bad thing to do. Yes. So how would you uh, use that? How would you use that in day to day life? OK, so if you draw attention to yourself at any point, really, when you, when you're doing something, uh, when somebody else is doing something, if you do something to draw attention to yourself, it means you're upstaging somebody when they they at that particular point, they are the people who should be uh, maybe they're talking, maybe somebody at work, for example. You're talking at work about something in a meeting and then somebody starts talking over you. Yes. Or uh, maybe you're giving a presentation and then somebody interrupts it and starts putting in their opinions. Yes. It's a bit rude. They shouldn't do it. They're trying to upstage you, trying to make themselves appear more important than mm. you. Uh, and you, you can. We, we've just used stealing the limelight. If somebody at a wedding... Uh, tries to outdress the bride, yes. or tries to get into all the photographs. Yes. Uh, they can, you can, as we said, they, you can use the expression stealing the stealing the limelight, but you can also use the expression upstaging mm. in that example. They're trying to get one over. Yes, they're I trying to cut in. Uh, people can cut in on the stage if you're saying a line. Uh, somebody is upstaging you. They might cut in with their line too early. Yes. And uh, you know, take the, st take your authority away, and that's what can happen in everyday life. So if you upstage somebody, it means that you're drawing attention away from them onto yourself by doing something. Yes, and we so, all know people that like to do that. That's it. That's great. So someone at the back is getting more attention than the person at the front who should be get they're getting the attention. Yes, but I in like real that. life, it doesn't mean that they're literally oh, on, no. on the stage. They're at the they could yes, be at the back. But, I know in a, in a figure yes. in a figurative that's state, right. figurative. So, so that's using it uh, as, that's a, a, as a verb to upstage. Some, so I mean, for example, I could. You're, you're, this is your show, in effect, mm -hmm. the English show. But I could try and do things to try and upstage you, to try and appear more important than you. Oh, you do, or, and I do do that quite yes. often. You do, you do, you do <laughs> things that make the sound go awful. By shouting. Yes, and talking over you, you see that? I'm upstaging you, really. Well, uh, taking away your importance. Not really. Trust uh, me. But, but, like, yeah. but you know what I mean. Here we go. No. Waiting in the wings. Oh, yes, Waiting okay. in the wings. Now, the wings in a the theatre, as you probably know, are the, 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 the two far sides of the stage. And in the wings, uh, things are happening that you can't see. Things are being prepared. Actors are waiting. Props. P p people are waiting to bring props on in the wings. It's just a space behind the stage at the side. And in real life, uh, if somebody is waiting in the wings, it's somebody who's available to take over or to enhance you in some way in a role. For example, when Bill uh, retired from his job as CEO of the company, uh, Jill was waiting in the wings. So somebody is has been sort of plotting or uh, maybe scheming a bit to take charge and they're waiting there in the background and then suddenly somebody leaves and they step forward and take over. They were waiting in the wings, just waiting for an opportunity uh, to take over. Usually used probably negatively, would you say, you're waiting in the wings, Mr. Duncan, but we can see you. Uh, but at any point, you could step forward and push me off and take over. You were just waiting in the wings. Why, why are you waiting? Oh, yeah, I can just see your finger, Mr. Duncan. That's not my finger. <laughs> in that case, you should be very embarrassed, Mr. Duncan. A hard or tough act to follow. <laughs> Used on the stage, that means if a performer has been really good, the audience has, has loved them, and you've got to go on next with your performance, uh, you'll be a bit worried because somebody might say to you, blimey, you've got a tough act to follow. It means that you've got to do really well if you're going to do as well as the person that's just come on. Yes. And this is used in everyday life. 
you can say a hard act to follow or a tough act to follow. Yeah. It doesn't matter which way you use it. Uh, maybe perhaps you started a new job and then somebody says to you, oh, you've taken over from Jack. Oh, you've got a tough act to follow. Yes, because Jack was brilliant. Jack was brilliant at the job. So you've got to really do well. So you have at least as well as they have. You have to live up to his reputation or his standard of doing things. That's it. So it can be used in many different areas of life. If you're doing something or somebody's doing something, taking over a job or a role from somebody else who's performed it, who's done it very well. It could be a job, it could be anything. You know, you might be a gardener and uh, you might uh, somebody you might be doing somebody's garden they might say oh you've got to do a good job here uh, bill did it last week you've got a tough act to follow here all can i can say is bill and jill are very busy um yes they're very busy people backstage 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 is 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 something that's happening uh off the stage that you can't see behind the scenery lots of things going on there you can't see it it's uh, the main performance is happening on the stage, but there are lots of things going on behind the stage, backstage, that is integral and important to what's happening on the main stage, on the stage, because unless all the prop people get everything ready, unless all the technicians get the lighting correct and the sound, all that's happening backstage, you can't see it, but it's important. In everyday life, uh, however, that expression is used to denote shady activities, maybe unsavoury activi activities going on in the background that you can't see. So a company might have, if a company has backstage activities, it means that they're probably doing illegal things that you can't see in everyday life but it's going on somewhere in an office somewhere yeah. shady things are happening uh, so that that's how that expression can be used it's usually used negatively yes. uh, to suggest that things are happening behind the scenes which probably shouldn't be happening a lot of people ask what what's it like behind the scenes it, on your live stream so I'm gonna I'm going to show you something now I've never shown this before Steve I'm actually going to show you what we see. So this is what, what Steve and I see when we're doing this. So this is, this is something, I've never done this before, so I'm going to do it now. So this is what it looks like to us from where we're standing now. Let me just get it right. So there it is. So this is what we see. <laughs> this is a very unusual thing. I've never shown this before. So no. there it is. So this is what we see now. So as we're looking at you, this is actually what we see. And you can see that it's live. Five minutes to four o'clock. And that is what we see in front of us. So there you can see behind the scenes. And I must say, it's not very interesting. <laughs> well, we, we can see ourselves and you've got all sorts of things queued up there ready. So things ready to show. So yes, and you can. Yes. So a lot of people ask about the live stream and how we actually Hello. do it. Hello. So there is Steve waving. So there it is. That that is behind the scenes. That's what it looks like. <laughs> in my little studio, here in Much Wenlock. If you ever wonder what's happening behind the scenes, we've got a big monitor in front of us, and Mr. Duncan is is controlling everything from there. Yes. Um, <laughs> there we go. Number. OK, number now a number in 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 theatre is 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 a particular set piece. So you might have a musical number uh, where there's a bit of dancing or you might have or you might have a dance number because a, a, any play or a musical is divided up into lots of different sections. Things are going on and they're all actually numbered. Uh, so if, if, if you're in a rehearsal, somebody says, right, we're going to rehearse number five or number 20, you turn in your rehearsal book and you know which one it is. So that's the number. But the number could be a dancing, it could be a singing. Uh, it could be two or three minutes, it could be five minutes. That's a number. Whereas if you, in, in everyday language, if you do a number on somebody, mm -hmm. if you do a number on somebody, it means you humiliate them. 
uh, or embarrass them in public. So it's a bit like if you do a big dance number, uh, you're showing off, you've done, you've done a great job. If you do a number on somebody, it means you embarrass them and humiliate them by doing mm. something. Yeah, so oh, he really did a number on me. Yes. So he does something to make people laugh at yes. you or something like that. You might also describe it as a terrible action. Yes, it could be, yes. Or an, a, a humiliating action that somebody does against you. They do a number on you. So in theatrical terms, a number is a performance. Performance maybe, of a song. Maybe a, a song or a dance. And to do a number on someone is to do something bad towards them or to, to be hateful or hurtful or to make a person look, look bad. bad or yes if, if you do a number on on a part of your body though it means you've, you've injured it so I've, re I've really didn't done, done a number on my ankle <laughs> that means you've injured your ankle okay uh, which is a slightly different meaning which I is thought, not connected with I thought it. you were going to say I've really done a number on my uncle <laughs> ankle which is something very different uh, certainly the other way around it would be out of step. Uh, well, yes, is this related to the theatre? Well, of course, if you're dancing on the stage, it means you've got to be... If you're doing a dance number on a stage, everyone's got to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, and usually they're all stepping, doing the steps at the right time. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. If you're out of step uh, in, in life... <laughs> and not on the stage. It means that you've got views about something which are are, are, are not the mainstream oh. or not what everybody else is thinking yes. at the time. So uh, you're not conforming to what everybody else or the majority of people are thinking or doing. You're out of step. Uh, so just as if you uh, were out, t your timing was out, if you were doing some dancing, uh, you would be out of step on the stage. You would be out of step in your thinking. So, for example, John's views about multicultural multiculturalism are out of step with current thinking. Mm. So John probably doesn't like people from different ethnic backgrounds living in his village or in his town. Uh, and you could say that he was out of step with current mm. thinking. People, people of a certain age might find themselves out of step generally with yes. maybe what's going on in the world or politics. So, yes. so you can be out of step just, just with your perception of the world around you. In my job, for example, things that, I mean, we, we live in a very rapidly changing world and it's mm. very easy to become out of step if you don't keep up to date with everything, if you shut yourself away and just carry on doing what you've always done with your same circle of friends, you can rapidly become out of step with what's happening in, 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 in the world out there. And in my job, uh, technology has become a big part of my job mm. now. I mean, when I first started in sales, everything was on paper. So if whoever I saw during the day, I had to record it all down on a piece of paper send it off in the post to head office. But now we have got iPads, everything's on computers. And if you don't keep up to date with all that, uh, you'll be out of step, out of, well, out of date or out of step with everything. Uh, so you need to keep abreast of the times, what's happening. Otherwise, you can rapidly become, and as you say, as you become older, it's easy to become out of step with the way everybody is thinking uh, currently. Bow, bow. Right now, when you bow on a stage, you're 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 taking credit uh, for uh, the you're you're taking acknowledgement from the audience. Uh, they're applauding, and you're 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 bowing to accept uh, their applause. Uh, you're acknowledging the audience applause, assuming that you get a good performance. And uh, we hope to get one after the end of today, <laughs> and we will bow and say thank you. Thank you for your appreciation, showing your appreciation by clapping. In general, uh, if you if you bow, you, you can use this simile in, in real life, of course. It's the same. So you're responding to positive attention after some accomplishment. You take a bow. Hmm. Now, they thought that this... Uh, and But you can say, oh, that was a great presentation at work, uh, 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 Betty. Oh, take a bow. 
Yes, I'm glad you didn't use any <laughs> real name there of a work colleague. Yes, if you've done something, something that uh, people might just say, oh, come on, take a bow. Uh, you've done a good performance in something at work, perhaps. And uh, people may say that to you. They used to think that they're not quite sure where their origin, why people used to bow after performances at, in theatres. They think it was probably because uh, maybe when royalty was present uh, that that's, that that uh, that started. Yeah. But nobody's quite sure. Well, you're showing respect almost. So you've for you've, the audience. You've, yes, you're respecting the audience for for sitting there and they've watched your show and you say, "Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I will take a bow." Take a bow, Mr. Duncan, for a wonderful English live lesson today. Ah, now I'm saving the last one because this is relevant to us now. The curtain call. The curtain call. Oh. So the, this is the curtain call in a performance on the stage is when after the show has finished, the curtain comes down. Well, actually, there's a, there's a couple of different uh, interpretations of this, but the one that most people generally understand as meaning is the curtains come down, but then the curtain reopens again and all the performers come back on, sometimes individually, each to take their the applause from the audience and bow and to be recognised. Mm. Uh, and sometimes the performers will go off again and then they will come on again. In, in an orchestra, they will go off, come on again. If it's been a particularly good performance, you might have to take lots of curtain calls and come on again and again to take bows and applause from the audience. And the performer that is credited with having the most curtain calls... Uh, is Pavarotti, Luciano Pavarotti, the famous opera singer, who's uh, who's not alive anymore. Uh, he holds the record of taking, in one performance, 165 curtain calls. So he went off. He went off. Everyone clapped. He had to come on again. And then he came back on again, and, and they clapped a bit more. And he then went off. He did another... They were still clapping. So he didn't, he didn't perform again. No, it's just when you come back on to take so the... So he just, he just sort of went... He went, oh, thanks, thanks a lot. He went off. Everyone claps. They didn't want him to go. He came back it on. Was so good. He clapped again. He went off again. He clapped. He clapped, 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 clapped. Yeah, and we he, get it, Mr. Duncan. He came back again. How many times? 165, apparently. We'll try and beat that today. We'll try and get 170 curtain calls. He deserved the limelight, obviously, for that performance. Uh, and nobody could upstage Pavarotti. So do I. Because he always had the best voice. Uh, in his day. Uh, uh, right, so sports players sometimes um, do a curtain call. It's unusual, but sometimes if there's been a particularly good performance by even within a team, maybe a footballer has uh, scored all the goals or scored the winning goal. They could be man or woman of the match. And they might go out into the field and take a bow, take it, they'll say, call it a curtain call. Sometimes they'll do that. But it applies anywhere where you receive recognition or applause for something. So you can take a curtain call at work. You know, come on, take a curtain call, take, do a few bows. Yes. There's one uh, you've missed out. What's that? What about encore? I don't think that's related to the stage, Mr Duncan. Encore, encore is? Encore, yes. Yeah. An encore, yes. Encore. It means you, you, you come back and you do a little bit of your performance again. Yes. So you come back on and you do a little bit more of the performance and then they go off and everyone will applaud and then they come back on and they do a little bit more and you can shout. You can also shout encore, 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 which means more. And performers we, usually... We want to see more. Particularly singers, they've usually got a few songs that they are going to use for the encore. Mm. Uh, maybe two or three that they've already rehearsed and they know they're going to do that as an encore. Because when somebody finishes a performance, particularly a solo, like a singer, you don't normally get encores in the theatre because unless you've planned it, encores can be disastrous. Mm. No, People think that a performer does an encore, it's spontaneous. It's never spontaneous. Nothing in, nothing in the theatre is ever spontaneous so like the, that. So it's the always planned. So the encore might seem 
spontaneous, but, yes. it, but it isn't. If you went to watch a play, there wouldn't be an encore there because there's so many people involved, you couldn't, you couldn't suddenly just do another scene or something. Yes, it might be worth mentioning that today there will not be an encore. So after we finish, we will not be coming back on. No. Definitely. We'll be gone because we haven't planned anything. Because Mr Steve is going to make a cup of tea and also a lovely tea cake. And it's already five past four. It's five past four. We're doing overtime. <laughs> so that's it. That's the theatre words that I managed to, to, to drum up. That's very good. Uh, let's have a look outside because my Christmas lights oh. are now glowing. Ooh. They look lovely. Look at this. This really does feel like Christmas is on the way. Take a look at this. So this is now a live view outside. It's a taster. Yeah, taster. So this is not recorded. This is live. This is looking outside and we are looking at the Christmas lights and you can see some of the flashing lights at the bottom of the screen. But in, in fact, if I'm clever, I might be able to just move that, move that down slightly so you can see the, uh, the flashing lights. Shall I do that? No, I'll do that next week. We won't ruin the fun because next week we will show you the Christmas lights. So that, as Steve said, is a taster. So there you can see the Christmas a taster, lights. A little, a little bit of the whole that we're going to show all of it next week. So we, we will let you have a good look at the Christmas lights next week. Let's have a look at the live chat before we go. It is almost time to say goodbye. <laughs> ah, take so, a bow, says uh, Lilia. Oh, yes. Well, you, you can if you want, Steve. Take a bow. This live lesson has been a delight. Thank you very much. That's great. What an amazing artist and a wonderful human being. He did a lot of charity concerts. That must be Pavarotti. Yes. Not not Mr. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> How many curtain calls have you had, Steve? Uh, well, quite a few in my amateur career. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very, it's nice. So it's still it's still nice to get recognition sometimes yes bye bye see you next week thank you louis thank you olga thank you martha thank you lilia thank you very much for your lovely lovely videos if you want to send something you can the the actual email address is on the live chat i will leave it also at the end of today's live stream Every Sunday you can catch us live. That's myself and also Mr. Steve as well. Every Sunday. We are back next week, 2 p.m. UK time. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Nazreen. Thank you very much for your company today. It's been lovely. And we will see you later. Mr. Steve will be making his way off the stage now. So uh, would you like some applause, Steve, before you leave? Ah, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, yes, yes, applause, I want applause, Mr Duncan. Okay, take a bow. I want the kudos, somebody's used the word kudos. Take, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, that's very good. <laughs> and now Mr Steve will leave. Wh which stage will it be? Will it be stage right or stage left? Ah, well, that's another interesting one. I will a exit stage left. Ah, OK. Which is when you're on the stage with the audience in front of you, it's your left. Okay. Not the left. What, what the audience will see might be different. So you will be leaving stage left. My left. OK. Which is so, that way. OK, and that's what <laughs> Mr Steve is about to do. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <sighs> and before I go, I want to show you something very special because the theme today has been all about snow. Do you remember the thing I did last winter? And that, as they say, is that. I will see you next Sunday. Don't forget, 2 p.m. UK time. 
I will put my email address on the live chat before I leave and I will see you next Sunday. Thanks for your company and I will see you at 2 p.m. next Sunday. Don't forget. And of course, we will be another week nearer Christmas time. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thank you very much for watching me teaching you and I hope it has been helpful. And of course, until the next time we meet right here on YouTube, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Have a super week. Stay safe and ta-ta for now.